Hey, this is Jim Graham from the Masculine Journey podcast, where we explore relationship instead of religion every week. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Uh, One zillion dollars. The question is, who let the dogs out? Who, Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who? Welcome to the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action, and now. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. is Palm Sunday Eve here today. How exciting is that? Palm Sunday Eve. And so my question is, who let the donkeys out? Now, I I, I couldn't find a song (laughs) about letting the donkeys out. So I went with dogs, but it's okay. Who let the donkeys out is actually the bigger question here. And then what what does Hosanna mean? That word, you've heard it every probably Palm Sunday since you've been going to church. And so what, what does Hosanna mean? I know you have a questioning mind like me. And so as you consider the donkeys of Palm Sunday and, and you consider that word Hosanna, what comes through your mind? What are your thoughts? What do you think the donkeys represent? What do you think Hosanna means? I would love your input. I love to talk about this stuff. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. So you heard who let the dogs out by the Baja men, sort of a, you know, personal favorite of mine. <laughs> and then Hosanna by Paul Belushi. I, Belushi? I, I'm not exactly know how you pronounce his last name, but I love it. it. That song is so amazing to me. One of my favorite Easter songs or Palm Sunday songs. And so we are going to get to what exactly Hosanna means. Uh, and, and interestingly, when you, when you look at the actual Hebrew on that, you, you're going to find that it has very much to do with Jesus' name itself, Yeshua. So, and, and we're going to get to that. So we're going we're gonna to say that this show is brought to you by the Hebrew letter Ayan, because it's a, it's a very functional part of Jesus' name and, and certainly um, the idea of Hosanna. So talking about these donkeys, which is where I want to start this conversation, like have you considered the fact that there were in Matthew the way it reads, and I'll just read the passage for you because to me it's it's hugely significant uh, and, and something to really consider on this uh, Palm Sunday Eve. And when they drew close to Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage, which by the way means house of unripe figs. And to the Mount of Olives, they sent uh, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village over against you, and right away you're going to find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. So we're just going to start out there for a minute. So I don't know if you've ever given a lot of thought to the fact that here's this donkey and then the donkey's colt. And what it, what's the big deal with that? Why would that be in the Scriptures? Well, to say that God was painting this unbelievable picture for us all to see of how, A, Jesus operates and the peace that comes with Jesus. It's really unbelievable if, if you, as you dig into this. And again, if you have your thoughts, I would love to hear them. 866-348-7884. So 
you know, the first time you see a, a donkey in the scripture is you're going to find that Isaac was loaded up onto one on his way to Mount Moriah to paint a picture again of the importance of the triumphal entry coming in on a donkey, as Isaac did. And then when you look in Genesis 49, 11, which, by the way, I have all these scripture references on this post today at the Christian Car Guy Show, so you don't have to write them down if you're driving. <laughs> you can go look them up later. But in, in Genesis 49, 11, when Israel or Jacob was blessing his sons, he gave Judah a special blessing. And it says that your donkey will be uh, tied to the vine, but your choice is colt, in other words, a male baby donkey, is going to be tied to the choicest vine. And that's significant, again, because you're going to see that when Moses rides into Egypt, I don't know if you ever looked at that, it's in Exodus 4.20, guess what he rides on? A donkey. And of course, there's the famous talking donkey that, you know, Balaam <laughs> was, right? all that stuff. And then really very important to the idea of Palm Sunday. In Judges 10, there was a, a judge that had 30 sons. That's pretty good, don't you think? I mean, if you had 30 sons, well, guess what? Those 30 sons rode on 30 colts of a donkey. Not just a donkey, but a colt of a donkey. And then they had two generations later, there was a judge that had 40 sons, and he had 40 judges that rode on 40 colts of a donkey. And we'll get to why that's so significant here in a minute. But he also had 30 servants of those sons, so he had a total of 70 colts being ridden. Now, here's the thing. Let's just talk donkeys a minute, because this is critical to the whole understanding. See, a male donkey is called a jack. You might have heard that. You can you can put the... <laughs> You can put the suffix on it and figure it out for yourself. So anyway, a male donkey is called a jack, and a female donkey is called a jenny. And so if you went around a donkey farm, you're going to find that jenny is a very gentle a creature. They're, they're, they're more affectionate than a dog, some people say. That's why I use the who lets the dogs out. And, and, and they're very lovable, and you could bring your kids around them, and they'll protect your animals, and they're very social because they're herding animals, and that's they work. They'll protect your, your sheep and your goats and all that stuff. Jennies are wonderful, or even geldings, you know, donkeys that have been castrated. They are absolutely gentle, wonderful creatures. However, there's one kind of donkey that you just – really got to stay away from. In fact, if you read much on them, they're going to tell you that you do not want a young male donkey around anybody because they could get hurt. You don't want them around your children. And, and oh, they, they seem as friendly as any of the other donkeys up until the point that they get the smell of any kind of female donkey, which, by the way, they can sniff the air for up to 200 miles, I understand. And when they get that whiff in their nose, you now have become public enemy number one to them because you are a possible uh, adversary. <laughs> or if you happen to be standing in their way when this donkey takes off, you're going to understand why they're referred to as a jack. Okay? <laughs> jack donkey, I'll just say for, for all purposes here. So Jesus and all these judges, they didn't sit on any ordinary donkey. They sat on one of these jacks. Now, what does that tell you that these guys were all kind of donkey whisperers, right? That here's an animal that really doesn't have a lot of peace, especially. So if you're riding on this guy and all of a sudden he smells something, like he's headed down the road and there is nothing you can do to stop him. That's why, you know, these guys knew that if somebody was capable of riding one of these guys, they must have tremendous peace. And they would make a good judge because what judges do is they look for the good, they look for the good and people. They do their best to bring it out. That's what a good judge does. And this is exactly why they knew, all the Israelites knew, that if somebody was capable of riding, and, and there's another uh, passage in Judges that talks about a white donkey, and, and, and they knew that the Messiah would come on the colt of a donkey because it would be a sign of the peace that he would bring with him. Right? You, you get the picture? <laughs> and so, you know, there's some other notable things about this, okay? So Jesus didn't just go get this, this, this jack donkey. He sent his disciples to get this jack donkey. Now, in this particular day and time, right, this would be like telling Nick, my producer, like, Nick, 
There is a Lexus about two blocks away, and somebody left the keys in it, right? So if you want to just go get that, and if anybody says, why are you stealing that Lexus, just say, oh, the Lord has need of it. <laughs> and I'm gonna bring, he's going to bring it back to you. <laughs> because in those days, man, you steal a donkey, and it could go really, really bad for you. I mean, this is you've, you've taken somebody's ride, man. I mean, this isn't good. And, and, this, uh, and so um, and the Colt donkey represented many future donkey generations to come. So you, you didn't just take, you know, their ride, the, you, you, you took their stud, so to speak, as well. So, I mean, this ain't good. <laughs> so I, I, I heard a, a good friend of mine once said that, that there was this sermon on this idea being that these are the keys to the kingdom. When you use the magic words, the Lord has need of it, you can then do amazing things. And so we're going to talk about that when we get back. But I would love your thoughts. Of course, we're going to get to what Hosanna means. But what you know, when you think about these donkeys, maybe you have some donkey experience. Maybe you have some Jack donkey experience. <laughs> maybe you've known me for a while. Anyway, however that works, 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Ooh, let the dogs out. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Who let the donkeys out? <laughs> Who let the donkeys out? And what what does Hosanna mean? I would love your thoughts on all that. I really, really would. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. And, and so we've been talking about, you know, Jesus, he told his disciples, <laughs> how would you like this job, man? Go steal the Lexus, okay? Just go steal it. And don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, in one of the other gospels, somebody actually did say, like, what you doing? And they were like, well, the Lord has need of it. And they just walked out, out there with the guy's donkeys. I, you know, hey, this is what happened. We don't have any other explanation. <laughs> but anyway, after I learned that that was, a, that was one of the keys of the kingdom that's instrumental to the Christian car guy, um, uh, Jesus's labor love, which is car repair for single moms, widows, and families in crisis. And often we have a crisis that I don't have a lot of answers for, but I did discover that this truly is one of the keys to the kingdom. So I, I had this situation in Kentucky one time where this, this lady, she, her car was broken, single mom, really difficult situation. There was a guy who was willing to fix it and charged nothing to do that. I mean, he was a repair shop, but he said, I need to get the car here, and I don't have a tow truck, and it has to be towed. And I said, well, is, is there a record you know, driver in your area that he goes, yeah, but he's not a Christian. There's no way in the world. He's, he's like the unjust judge, man. He is not going to help you. This just isn't going to happen. I know the guy. And I said, well, give me his number. I'll just try. <laughs> <laughs> and why did I do that? Because I know when you, if you try to get a free record for yourself, that ain't happening. But if the Lord has need of it, you'd be amazed at, at what you get accomplished. So, you know, I called this man and I, I said, hey, I'm with the Jesus Labor Love and uh, we help single moms and widows and, and this poor lady's got a broken car and I got somebody wanting to fix it. We just need somebody to get it over there. And he talked, he's like, he was like, what are you thinking how do you think I make my living? How do you think I keep from having to be Carl? You know, and he went into this great big long explanation. It was classic, man. It was just beautiful. And when he got all done with it, I just said, the only thing I knew to say is I said, my friend, the Lord has need of it. <laughs> and he, he went into another classic long, I mean, he didn't hang up on me or anything. He just kept talking. And, I, and when he got all done with the next, you know, barrage of what he hit with me with, I just said, the Lord has need of it. <laughs> it's, he knew I was from the Jesus labor love, right? And finally, the guy just says, all right, all right, I'll tow the car. Well, you, it's just, you promise I will never hear from you again. You promise you will never call me as long, you know, da-da-da. And he went, I mean, I said, I promise you'll never hear from me again. This is this is what's going to happen, right? Um, so <laughs> it's such a funny story. <laughs> He goes and tows the lady's car. It gets fixed, right? I tell the story on the air the next week. 
Of course I would. You know, this is one of the most amazing, you know, God moments. You know, God just came through because I had the keys to the Lexus because I knew that the Lord had need of it. Well, one of our listeners in Greensboro knew the guy because I mentioned his name and I've forgotten it now. It's been a few years ago. And she knew the guy and she called in and she said, Robbie, I just don't believe that that's unbelievable that that happened. Right. And so she <laughs> he didn't hear from me. That lady that knew the guy in Kentucky that lived in Greensboro called him to tell him how proud she was. And so you just don't know, because clearly when you think about who I was talking to, okay, it all relates. He was sort of a donkey, okay, sort of a full, he was, he was sort of a, a young colt donkey, if you know what I mean. And, and so what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to loose those donkeys, in our lives, wherever they may be. And it may be, you know, at some point, I was certainly, not some point, probably yesterday, about 10 times, I was a donkey, a, a male donkey, a jack donkey. And, and so at some point, we got to l- lose those jack donkeys. And what do we got to do? We got to bring them to Jesus. That's what he asked to do. He didn't go get it himself. He asked the disciples to bring the jack donkeys to me. Okay. And, and then what's going to happen? Fascinatingly, they throw their clothes on him. Right? This is what happens in the story. And, and, and Jesus, they put Jesus on top of their clothes, on top of their donkey. What's up with that? Well, beautifully, the word for garments that they use there is the same word that's used in uh, the book of uh, Second Kings. In chapter 9, Jehu, which was sort of a jack donkey himself, he's the one that <laughs> had Jezebel thrown out the window, uh, which she had it coming, no doubt, but it, you know, it's a little bold to throw Jezebel out the window, and uh, no doubt he, he but he, this is, you're going to find the first reference of them throwing clothes down when they anoint someone king, happens to be when this particular jack donkey becomes king, Jehu. A- and so why do they do that? Because from the beginning of, of Genesis, w- when God made skins, and then certainly when Jacob puts the hairy skins on, skins and, and, and garments are very much linked to the idea of deception. In other words, we all have masks that we wear. <laughs> it's called your personality. It, you know, in order to protect yourself because you don't have Jesus' blood over you. But if you got Jesus' blood, you don't necessarily need your mask because you're now fully able to be naked and not ashamed. Okay, but unfortunately, it takes us a while to learn that. But nonetheless, they are putting their clothes on this donkey. They're putting their deception on the donkey and then putting Jesus on top of their donkeyness and on top of their deception. You see, and Jesus is now you, you now have the donkey, the ultimate donkey whisperer right where you want him driving you. OK, I mean, this this is the this is the picture of why this whole thing, you know, was unfolding for them. And again, if you have thoughts along these lines, believe me, I would love to discuss, you know, what you're thinking. 866-348-7884, 866-34-TRUTH. But to begin with, in the whole idea of, of this triumphal entry, which there's hardly, I mean, again, God's been painting this picture since Genesis of what this meant for Jesus to climb on this donkey with all these clothes, Right of all these people's deceptions and all our Jack Donkeyness is all right there where Jesus wants it, where He can begin to speak peace. Right, His peace comes in and is the ultimate donkey whisperer. Is a picture that that, that God had been painting all the way through, certainly uh, the Book of Judges and all those things. So when we come back, we will finally get to what does Hosanna mean, and. We are looking forward to your calls because maybe you've had the Jack Donkey experience. 866-348-7884. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Let the dogs out. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Who let the donkeys? <laughs> who let the donkeys out today? And what does 
Hosanna mean on the Christian Car Guy Show? What are your thoughts? I would love to hear your story or your thoughts. Always, it's a live show, and that's what makes it fun. 866-348-7884 is the number to call in and share. 866-348-7884. And so, you know, Nick and I were talking about donkeys. And, yeah, you know, you think about that young Jack Donkey. He was made that way, right? That that What's going on is that, you know, he was made to, that when he smelled that, he, he needed to procreate so there would be more donkeys. But the, the challenge is for all of us is – that we're only thinking about ourselves at that moment. And and the reason why the Jenny donkeys are nice and the gelding donkeys, they're naturally nice animals. They're, they're wonderful animals. And, 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 and the Jack is too, as long as his needs are met. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, to give ourselves a break a minute to say, Hey, we need a, you know, the reason why we're acting like a Jack donkey could be that we need to have our needs met in some way. And Jesus show me how that may be. Because, again, it's fascinating to me that part of the reason that they recognized that this was the king was that he was able to bring peace to this very difficult situation right here. And they recognized it as, as, as those that were riding these colts of the foal. And, again, look at, look at the prophecy that, that was back there in Genesis, you know, when, when in Genesis 49 when Israel— prophesies over Judah, you know, one of the very first things he says is he, he goes talking about this cult that was, that was to the choicest vine, and it, and it really was. But again, it was fa- it's fascinating to me that as those disciples, he's telling, you know, here's what a disciple do. Well, part of what disciples do is we go find people that are thinking about nobody but themselves and very, very difficult to deal with, like my friend that was the record service, right? And then just keep, and you listen to all that they have to say and why they can't do it. And I understand, and I understand you don't want to come to church. I understand, I understand, but the Lord has need of it. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. The Lord has need of it. And and if you can do that, it's amazing what the Lord will do with it. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing uh, to see. And, and so to follow along the story, as we were talking about, that they threw their clothes on the donkey and and they threw their clothes in the road just similar to what they had done for Jehu when he was anointed king um again if you're looking for those references they're all there at christiancarguy.com it's second kings 9 uh, is where Jehu is made king and they throw those clothes on if you're looking for that um but then the next thing happens is as you may recall is they're going to begin to shout hosanna right and what happens is, in a very great multitude, spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches, that's the idea of the palms, from the trees, and straight them in the way. And then the multitudes that went before and it followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And, and see, what they're actually doing there, this is... Um, the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's, it's, it's when Jesus comes in on the triumphal entry, you, you know, his Passover week is what's coming. And that's the reason why he's coming into Jerusalem. And it's also the reason all these people are there for Jerusalem is they are celebrating this picture, again, that God's been painting since the beginning of time. And, and the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, is it lasts for eight days. And he's going to come in on a Sunday, but if you count it out, it, it Easter Sunday will be eight days later. So it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and another Sunday. You got eight days, and so just like, you know, the covenant of circumcisions to eight days, or they cleanse the temple in eight days, and so many miracles happen on the eighth day. Jesus is showing up on this Palm Sunday because this is going to be miraculous, and they realize that now as they would be celebrating this this particular holiday they would be singing the hallel psalms and the hallel psalms another reference you may want to check out are psalms 113 through psalms 118 but psalms 118 if you really spend any time with it you're going to see it is the palm sunday psalm i mean, just it, it 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 is where they talk about all these things where they talk about he comes in the in the name you know in his the son of david Right and the the stone the builders rejected and, and it talks about him being swarmed by bees and and all these things that have to do with Palm Sunday believe me are all in 
Psalm 118, and they were been singing these Hillels because they're getting ready for this feast, right? And all these things were to them. They'd been singing these songs every t- year that they they celebrated Passover since they were a little kid, right? And, and so when they see this, what they knew the Messiah would come in on a donkey's colt, and this particular one was white, as, as I understand it, because again, there was a prophecy about the white donkey, the Messiah, that you know, they see this as a, a, a donkey's colt. They see that it's white, and they see this man sitting on it with all these clothes straight out in front of him, and they begin to say, Hosanna. So what does that word mean? Well, it is also, if you look closely in the 118th Psalm, and specifically in verse 25, it, I wish the King James people or somebody would translate it so that you could see it as clearly as what it is there. But in Psalm 118, 25, if you read it in the King James Version, it says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, save now. Send thy prosperity. So the, the word now in Hebrew is ahana, right? But the word save is the same word as Jesus, which is Yeshua, <laughs> okay? And so you hear that. In fact, you, you can listen to the 118th Psalm in the song version on YouTube, and you'll hear that the idea of, uh, of yeah, uh, and then it goes Anna. Well, Anna means now is what it means. Hosanna means save me now. But it actually, since the word for save, which is salvation, and the word Jesus are almost completely, you know, could be put in the same place. So it's almost like Jesus now. Jesus now, and so the the actual word now that Anna is repeated three times in the 118th Psalm, verse 25. So he's saying now, now, now. I mean, that's what David was saying. Jesus, now, now, now. So when you're saying Hosanna, right, and when you think about that idea of Jesus coming now, now if you're like me and you quite often act like a donkey, especially a jack donkey, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is the precise moment when you need to cry Hosanna because what we're looking for is I, I need Jesus, I, I need him to, to climb on top of my false stuff that I've got all over my back and, and I need him to get rid of, you know, get my needs met so I don't have to be such a, a jack donkey, right? I mean, you get the picture if, of what is going on here personally for you because this is Palm Sunday. And so, yes, it's a picture of what happened, you know, over 2,000 years ago, but it's also happening today in my life and your life because if you're like me, <laughs> you know, it's just a struggle, uh, you know, of, of stuff that's going to be coming down. And the beautiful thing about Hosanna is it's saying, save now. And then I love the end of verse 25. They say send prosperity. That's the way it's translated again, the King James Version. But the word prosperity in Hebrew begins with the idea of righteousness. And the idea of the Messiah himself is is the idea of the righteous one. And see, things need to be made right. We need to be in a right relationship. And see, if you're in a right relationship with God, as Solomon found out, you're going to be extremely prosperous. <laughs> I mean, prosperity follows that idea of wisdom, which follows that idea of being in this right relationship. So if you, if you follow the whole idea as you ask for Jesus now, 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 right? Throw your, you know, your, your, your false self up there. Let Jesus take the wheel, so to speak. It's perfect for the Christian guy guy to say that, but as he takes the wheel, right, what will naturally happen is you will get into a right relationship because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The way to what? The way to the Father. So as you become into a right relationship with the Father, oh, the prosperity that comes, but it's real prosperity, okay, because it's righteous. And and, and that righteousness, if you look at the word prosperity, it begins with a zaddy. And that zaddy means righteous. And so is you, it's like a tree is at a right angle to the ground. And this idea of when something is exactly right, then oh my goodness, right? Then then then, then that whole idea of and, and when you listen to that song Hosanna by Paul Blanchet, he he says, hearts yearning, our hearts are yearning for you. Our eyes are turning to you. You know, all those all those ideas are what happens is we get right like, oh man, <laughs> I've been running after every, you know, everything in the world that's for me when I should have been running after God. And, and what a beautiful opportunity we all have right here, right now on this particular Palm Sunday 
to to get this idea and you know hey I know this stirs something inside of you, and I, you have no idea how much I would love to talk to you. If you want to call us, the number is 866-348-7884, 866-348-7884. Who let the donkeys out? And what does Hosanna really mean? We'll be right back. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Let the dogs out. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Who let the donkeys out and what? Does Hosanna mean? That's what we're talking about today on the Christian Car Guys Show. 866 348 7884. 866 34 Truth. So I did, I posted this today at ChristianCarGuy.com along with all the scripture references and, and even some I haven't mentioned on the air that, that speak back to the donkeys in scripture and, and speak to the clothes being thrown on the, on the ground, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I just want to circle back. Well, I'd love to circle back to your calls, by the way. I would love to hear you and your thoughts on what we're talking about. 866-348-7884. 866-348-7884. So circling back to the Lord has need of it, okay? It, it's in, 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 in there at ChristianCarGuy.com, you're going to find the Jesus Labor Love, which you can apply for help or, or you can pray for them or you can donate to them. In other words, the, what I have discovered... <laughs> Yes, this is just so true. It it truly is a key to the kingdom that if the Lord has need of it, it will he will blow you away at what you can have to help somebody with. I, I've seen it. I you know almost every week since I discovered it, I, I you know somebody comes to me with some kind of need, and, and I have an opportunity to go ask somebody else. You know, and essentially in my heart, I know. They're going to give it to me because the Lord has need of it. And, and you just have a different, you're, you're in a different position than if you're asking for it yourself. You go back to the idea of the donkeys, okay? That when you're being a donkey, it's hard to get people to part with stuff for nothing, okay? But if you are truly, you know, looking for something to help somebody else with and you really believe in your heart that it's going to happen, it's amazing how the doors open up quite often in miraculous ways if you're waiting to see it. Because sometimes... You know, it comes directly. Sometimes it comes through another person. However, he comes, he meets the need. He, you know, but but it it has something to do with your particular faith. So, you know, I had the situation. I'm sure you may have heard me talk about the time I needed the battery in in Dallas, Texas, and 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 and, and a, you know a body repair on a car that I had no idea how to get fixed. Same idea that I just knew that you know if God's in this you know, he's going to get it done. He just does. And even this week, right, I had um, a wonderful man in Ohio uh, that donated a car to us, Nick. And and then I, you know, trying to find somebody for the car. And there's a lady by the name of Minnie who needs the car. And then there's a repair shop in the middle. The car needs a battery and it needs this, this, and this. And I was talking to the young lady and you could just see that, you know, when she realized that this was a Jesus labor love and she realized the Lord had need of things like, man, I mean, all of a sudden you could just sense, you know, her love for the Lord and her love to help. It wasn't like the other guy in Kentucky where he didn't know what he was going to get himself in for. But I just want to empower everybody with with what the disciples are told here. You're especially empowered to go steal stuff from Satan. OK, because that's what's really happening when you untie somebody that's being a jack donkey. They belong to Satan. And he has some whatever right to him, but you can look him straight in the face and you say, the Lord has need of this jack donkey. Okay. You can do that because he does that, that the Lord will, will allow that person to see what all their personality would be if they weren't so consumed with meeting their own needs. And, 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 you know, the idea of if you're going to be dealing with a jack donkey, you got to realize that they are trying to get their needs met. And you know how to meet their needs is Jesus. But 
getting in a, a, a useless argument <laughs> it's not going to help you you know the idea is you just take the reins you know that was that was tied up to satan and you kind of lead it gently over here to jesus and and it's amazing the things that can happen you know when you have that opportunity so last week i i did this funeral on saturday you know i wasn't here i did a celebration of life and it was the most miraculous thing that that a lot of the folks there i knew weren't people that would go to church or nor would normally talk about spiritual things but fascinatingly they had planned this celebration of life on 316 last saturday was as you may know if you listen to the show 316 for john 316 right and and i was not necessarily presiding over this event but but, the, but some of the family was but they'd asked me along sort of to have a pastor there to give a pastor's view of the transition is what they'd asked me to do and so, you know, when it came to the very end of the thing, I had said nothing. There had been no prayer spoken, all this stuff. I just prayed really quick, God, you know, show us what this means. Because I know at a point like this where, where people have passed away, we don't want something to grab onto. We want some hope to grab onto, right? The Lord has need of it. <laughs> we have need of all these people. And, and so my wife will tell you, because she was sitting right next to me, when I said, do you think God is winking at you all when you plan this particular celebration of life on 316? And my wife said, there were three or four people that literally gasped because he was winking at them. He's saying that God so loved the world. He does. <laughs> he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And it's coming up right here in this, this donkey ride. That whosoever, right? Who, I don't, it doesn't matter what, you, what kind of jack donkey you've been. It doesn't matter whatever else shenanigans are on there. It said whosoever. Right, believes in their heart and, and 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 really gets to that point of Hosanna now, Jesus, now, now, you know, make that all happen. Whoever believes in him, right, will not perish. You just won't. It, it, it's as sure as I am sitting here, if you will believe in your whole heart, he, he's gonna meet those needs that the jack part of yourself is always running off trying to get met. But you you gotta give those things, you gotta put them on your back, you gotta show him. What it is that you're trying to, you know, you got to be honest with him. You know, I'm, I'm craving this. I'm stuck in this. I'm doing that. Lord, show me, show me, show me, uh, you know, so that I can allow you to guide my life. And so that, you know, you, that, that, that you will get me to the direction that you want to go, which essentially is a disciple, somebody that will help others. You know, in First, Second Corinthians 1 says, you know, God comforts us essentially so that we can go comfort others with the comfort we were comforted with. Well, you've been, you, if you're like me, you've been a jack donkey, <laughs> right? And God comforted you through that. And so now you have the opportunity to go loose that other donkey over there and, and, and lead them carefully, right, to Jesus. I mean, there's, that's, that's the, the main idea here. And, and whether that's by meeting their needs is often someplace like the Jesus Labor Love can do that. You know, we can meet people's needs, and it's part of the reason we do that. But, but a big part of what we always do with the Jesus Slave or Love, you can just count on it. And either Scott, my, either Scott or myself, we talk to somebody, they're going to get prayed for right there. We're going we're gonna to try to tie their vine <laughs> to the Joyce's vine, right? We're going to try to take them and, and, and lead them to Jesus so that they can hear peace. And it's amazing. It's amazing to me how many times I've talked to somebody in the Jesus labor of love and they were so angry and so bitter about all these people that had hurt them, hurt them, hurt them, or car repair places that had hurt them, hurt them, hurt them. But as soon as you prayed with them, it was like they, they went from being a jack donkey to a Jenny donkey. <laughs> it was like man, they were friendly and nice and all that. But, but what was the difference? It was, it was the donkey whisperer. You know, that's what that's that's what the deal is. So, you know, as you head into this particular Palm Sunday, it, you know, look at those things for yourself. Review your own life. It's a beautiful week to really just prepare for Easter and all that's coming with that. And we just uh, here at the Christian Car Guy Show just pray that you will have an amazing Palm Sunday of reflection of truly having a Hosanna moment. Jesus, now, now, <laughs> now. And then remember... Slow down. Jesus walked everywhere he went, and he got it all done in 33 years.
This is the Truth Network.